So today I'd like to teach you a few more things about velocity. We've already learned that it is a vector, which is any quantity that can be represented by an arrow that has both magnitude and direction. The direction could be plus or minus for up or down, plus or minus for right or left. The direction could be an angle or the direction could be a bearing. When we talk about finding velocity mathematically, we use displacement. Remember, displacement is like distance, but not. Displacement needs a direction, such as plus or minus. Displacement only depends on where you start and where you end, and you subtract those two. So let's try a new problem. We're gonna have Tori Canuck running from home plate to first base. Ready whenever you are, Martha May. Ooh, that was a bad start, but she's quick. And we see it took her 3.33 seconds. We know the distance from Google Earth from home plate to first base as 18.19 meters. Since she's going to the right, we can call that displacement a positive number. So when we're trying to find her velocity, we would use the displacement over time, which is 18.19 meters over 3.33 seconds. And when we get our answer, that should be her velocity. So let's take a look at the question. The question asks us to find Tori's velocity as she's passing first base. We think we found the answer, but realize that that is not really true. What you find with this formula is what's known as the average velocity. If you're taking the total displacement divided by the total time, you get average velocity. Her velocity at the beginning was zero. Her velocity at the end is gonna be a little bit higher than the average. The first part of this run, she was picking up speed and then the remainder she ran at top speed. That top speed is not the same as the answer we got when we found the velocity. In order to figure out the actual velocity at a given moment, we need to have a fuller picture of the object's motion. So rather than just doing an algebra equation, we should really graph the motion. So this car will represent Tori, and we're going to have it start at rest, just like Tori did, and then pick up speed for a while. Somewhere around the four second mark, you can see that the line becomes straight. It becomes a linear graph. At this moment, the velocity is constant. In this area, it is gaining speed. So there's two types of velocities we might wanna find. If we do average velocity for this whole run, we would do zero for the starting position, 170 for the ending position, which gives us 170 over 10 seconds, which gives us 17 meters per second. That is the average velocity of the car. It is not the velocity for the entire time. If we did wanna find the maximum velocity that is the velocity when it's steepest, we'd wanna get just this diagonal part. So what we do, hopefully this makes sense. When you have a linear graph, the Y represents the change in position and the change in X represents the change in time. So if you find the slope of a linear position time graph, you will get the velocity of the object. So in this case, instead of going from 0 to 170, it goes from about 40 to 170. And instead of it being 10 seconds, it's approximately 6 seconds. Okay, so we get about 130 divided by 6. When we work that out, we would get the velocity for this entire section of the car's motion the whole time it's moving on that diagonal so by graphing it we can find the actual speed 
for quite a bit of the car's run. Without the graph, we'd be tempted to use the entire run and get simply the average velocity. There's sometimes where the average velocity is the same as the velocity at any given time, and that's if the entire run for the object is linear. So now all you have to do is find the slope, and that will give you both the maximum velocity, and it will also give you the average velocity. The velocity never changes, so the average is the same as the maximum. Sometimes you'll have a line that runs the other way. It's going backwards from 450 meters to 350 meters. So when you're finding the slope, you would do the final Y position, the starting Y position, the ending time, the starting time, and you'd get this time negative 100 over 20, which would be negative five meters per second. That is the velocity of the object that made this blue line. And because that line is linear for the entire time, this velocity is constant for that entire trip. Here's a car that's gonna, actually a little train, that's gonna go through a bunch of different stages. It starts at rest, it picks up speed, it moves at a constant speed, it slows down, and then it stops. This is what it would look like graphically. Starts at rest, picks up speed. You can see it curving to steeper and steeper slopes. Constant speed, you can see the slope not changing. You can see it remains at constant speed for quite a while. It happens to be the maximum speed because it's the fastest it's going, the greatest slope. Now you can see the slope starting to get smaller and eventually, you could see the slope hitting zero when the car comes to rest. So we have the car stopped. We have it slowing down. We have it going at its top velocity, maximum velocity. We have it speeding up. And we have it at rest. realize that it's sometimes hard to, <clears throat> it's sometimes hard to tell exactly when these transitions take place but we're pretty confident that this whole region is top speed and if we wanted to find that speed all we would have to do is pick two points on that line they don't have to be the end points pick points that are easy to read and find the slope if you wanted the average you would go from the beginning to the very end and subtract the total change in position from the total time. The final thing I'd like to teach you, very important idea, it's called the instantaneous velocity. It's the velocity at any given instant. So this time the car is never going to hit a maximum speed. It's gonna to continue to accelerate through this entire region and beyond. So how would we find the speed if it never becomes a linear graph? Well, what we can do, and you can see it with this purple line, is we create a linear graph that matches the slope of the actual car's motion. This is what's known as a tangent line. It is a line that has the same slope as the graph of the object's motion. And that tangent line would have a different slope at each different moment in time. So if you look again, at the very beginning, the slope is zero. The car's not moving. And you'll see the slope get larger as I slide the little object over. So that's the speed at the two second mark, three second, four second, five second. And you can see every time a second goes by, the slope gets steeper. Every time a second goes by, it gets faster and faster. So to find your instantaneous speed at a given moment in time, you create a tangent line. And again, a tangent line is a line that has the same slope as your original curve. 
and then you find the slope of that tangent line. Again, you don't have to pick the actual point, like in this case, the 10 second mark. Instead, pick two points on that line that are easy to read. So I would use 6.5 comma 50, and then 9.5 comma 150. I'd use those to find my slope, and that would tell me the speed. If I put a direction to that speed, it would become the velocity. Okay? So to summarize, whenever you use the endpoints, you get the average. Whenever you find the slope of a particular spot, you're getting the instantaneous. If the object stays at a steady speed for the whole time, or even just a portion of it, that instantaneous speed will stay the same for that entire section. I hope this made sense. If it doesn't, maybe as you go through the two problems, it will start to make more sense to you. So good luck, and if you have any problems, let me know.